Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I want to thank everybody for filling out my survey that I emailed out last week. I had tons of responses. I'll probably send it out once or twice more if you didn't send it out. Uh, it was really great to get all that awesome feedback. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. One of the questions that came out of that was how to use Lightroom web galleries. So. I thought it was time to do that. I hadn't done one of these ever, 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 ever on a Lightroom web gallery. At least not that I can remember or could find. <laughs> so I figured, why not? It's time to do one of those as well as show you how to put it on your website inside of the frame. So you still have the sidebar and the header and the everything so it all looks good. And uh, so I'm going to go over all that code and all that good stuff. So, first step, let's find some images in Lightroom. That's what I've done here. All right, then we're going to go over here onto our web module. Now, this web module has a ton of options, and the main thing to remember is the options are dependent upon which gallery you're using. Now, this is one that I just pre-set up, uh, and actually this is the one I'm going to be displaying on my website on Cazillo.com, so you'll be able to see everything that's going on there. Now. Uh, there's always a little bit of metadata with some, um, in, whether the site title, whether there's, um, let's see what else is in here. Uh, there you go, collection title, descriptions, contact info. It really depends on which one of the galleries you're choosing. Okay, um, there's a few different styles of them. The a lot, of the the basically they're pre-built scripts and they each look differently. Okay, they each have a kind of a different look and feel and functionality built into them, as you see from this one here. Uh, then we have the postcard viewer style, which is a little bit different. Pretty cool, huh? Um, then we have the simple viewer. The nice thing about simple viewer is it's Flash and HTML5, so it'll work on mobile devices, and I'm big on that right now. And uh, then there's the Lightroom Flash Gallery. Uh, which you can use if you want, which is all Flash, all W Flash, and then HTML, which is just HTML, and that's it. So you only have a single image, and there's no fancy stuff, except for maybe this little bit of a hover that's happening here, but that's it. So first you need to choose which one you want to go with, and start out with these built-in templates right here. By the way, these down here, these SSPs, they're for Slideshow Pro. They're another gallery that I have. If you look it up, Slideshow Pro, I think it's .NET. Um, really great one. I'll probably do a video on that in the future. Uh, but uh, I love using that. And that's how the ga my galleries are working on Kazillo.com. Let me show you those. Here you go. These galleries right down here are Slideshow Pro. And uh, I use their director software. And it works really good. I like it. I think it looks good. Works well on the iPad, on the iPhone, all that stuff. And uh, I think it's just a nice way to display images. Anyway, back to Lightroom. So, we're going to pick which style we want. Now, identity plates, we can add that. That's going to be at the top. And again, these are each of these options are going to be different on each gallery. Okay, and depending upon which one you choose. You can set your colors. Now, if we're using colors from Kazillo.com, we probably want to use blacks, reds, and white as the main background. Now, if you're using Firefox, I don't know if this works for Chrome or other browsers. If you're using Firefox, you can get this little plugin right here, and all of a sudden I forget what it's called. Jeez. Add-ons. Uh, it is called Colorzilla. Colorzilla, it's a really great little plugin. What it allows you to do is choose a color, just pick a color from your website. So, for example, I click this right here, and then I hover over and I can pick that gray color. Or if I wanted to, I can hover over my logo and pick that red color right there. Then that gives you what's called the hex numbers. And those hex numbers are what tells the browser, it's a six digit code that tells the browser what color to display. And so as soon as I choose that, it automatically copies it uh, to my um, uh, clipboard. So then I can paste that number right in here. Okay? And I hit enter, and there is that red color that I just chose. 
So now my headings are red. That's a really cool way to find those colors. All right. So I want to make some my background white. There you go. And see, I'd probably want to tweak a lot of these colors and stuff just to make them fit the website. And that's the goal is to make this look like it belongs inside of the website. All right. So everything is even and neat and looks good. All right. So um, next one, appearance. Do I want it to be six wide, seven wide, ten wide? That really depends on the size of your um, the view the viewport inside of the on the browser on the website. So the easiest way to do to find out what that is is this thing called Firebug. All right, you install, download and install Firebug, and then you do inspect element. All right, when you inspect the element, I don't know why it's not showing up. Oops, wrong window. There it is. Okay, what you need to do is find the main content area. You see how this is being highlighted right now? Okay, and it's only highlighting the content area and not the sidebar. There's a sidebar being highlighted. This is the content being highlighted. So that's what I want. That's the, the, the area that I want to use. All right, and then over here, by the way, I'm on the HTML tab, and then over here, you're probably going to start off in the style tab, but you want to switch over to the layout one, okay? And as you can see, this layout area, this area right here is 720 pixels wide by 1,279 pixels tall. Now, the height is going to change depending upon how much content you have. It's going to expand, and it's going to get smaller, which is fine. It's exactly what we want to happen. But the width is going to be set, most likely, in your, your template. It's going to be set. It's only going to be so wide. All right, so that's the number that we need to know. Write that down, all right, and get the stuff out of the way. Back to Lightroom. And uh, so what, that 720 is going to decide how wide this stuff is going to be, okay? Maybe this probably looks a little small. Maybe we can get away with five wide, okay, to fit in that 720. Um, let's see. That one doesn't have size. I think there were a couple here that allowed me to set the width gotta find it come on I know it was here oh geez I can't find it doesn't matter some of these templates you're able to set the width of this okay and be actually type it in and so that's the way to go uh, the other ones like the one that I created uh, for the website which is right here Okay, that one does uh, not matter. I can actually adjust that the, the size of the screen or the size of the viewport or the size of the browser window is what this determines how big this is. And that's what matters in this case. So it's going to resize itself automatically. All right. So the last thing that the, this person that asked this question was really a not understanding was what is an FTP server? And basically what an FTP server is, is a way to allow you to upload photos, documents, stuff basically, to your web space. All right? And your web space is where your website is housed. Okay? Is it on a, a you know, it's basically, it's on a server, it's on a computer somewhere out in the cloud. Okay? And you need to, to upload and download documents to it. That's basically all it is. It's just a set of HTML documents with some code in it and then your images and that's basically all it is that's that's um, making up your website so I have make this a little smaller for you this is my FTP program and I have uploaded all of my documents up to get rid of that okay up to this folder okay now I need to know what this path is okay this images stories and then photo galleries alright we're gonna write that down too because we need to know that one suggestion that I almost forgot to mention is, is make sure that you don't use any spaces or anything like that in your file names and your folder names when you're uploading and downloading folders. That's because most servers run on Linux and uh, Linux doesn't like spaces. You actually have ends up having problems with it and your links don't look pretty and all that stuff. So just do yourself a favor. Don't use them. You'll be much better off in the long run. Okay. So we've uploaded all that data onto the server we've exported oh 
We talked about FTP, but we didn't talk about exporting. That's right. Now, I can upload that directly from Lightroom. Okay? All fine and dandy, but you know what? It's just as easy for me, since I already have my server saved on the website, okay, or in another program, I can, where is it? There it is. I can uh, just export it, okay? So I'm going to just go down here and go to export and go to test and it's going to export that data for me. Where's my test folder? Here we go, okay? And so it's exporting the images, the thumbnails, all the HTML, all the everything into this folder for me. Then I will take this entire folder of content and upload it to my FTP server. By the way, this is the local side and this is the remote side. Another plugin you can get for Firefox is Fire FTP which allows you to upload uh, all the data so you don't even need to buy any programs you've already bought Lightroom that's all you need you can get uh, the the Colorzilla the Fire FTP program and the uh, Firebug program and do all the stuff right inside of Firefox so if you don't, aren't already using Firefox you might want to check it out I'm sure there's replacements though for Chrome which is another good browser I don't know about Safari how well their plugin architecture works and I'm 99% sure that none of this stuff is supported in IE, so uh, stay away from it. All right, so we have all of our stuff exported, and as you see, they're going to be a little bit different from uh, style to style, and that's okay. Uh, there is also this preview and browser button down here if you want to use it, if you just want a quick preview. Um, it works better for some of the galleries that um, the more advanced galleries especially the slideshow pro ones that I use it's that works a lot better than using this viewport right here alright uh, you can still save your templates just like you would any other time in any other uh, part of Lightroom so that uh, if you want to make it consistent and that's always a good thing on your website is consistency it'll work well alright so let's preview here's a preview of that gallery that we just created, all right, and it just exported. There we go, and you know what? It's even showing some information down here. We can turn that on and off if we want. Over here in image info, okay, we can turn that stuff off if we wanted to. Last step, we have found our photos. We have set up the gallery how we wanted, okay. We have uploaded it to the server after exporting, and the last thing we need to do is make it work and make it look like it's a part of the website. Now, if you go over to kazillo.com and you check out this post, okay, the link is down in the description on YouTube, or hopefully you're already on the website, here is the code. This is going to be the simplest way for you to get this uh, gallery to display inside of the frame of your website. Let's make this a little bigger for us here. Okay, there. See? So I have my entire header and all that stuff around. All right, and there's my gallery. So it's inside of the frame of my website instead of in a completely separate page like this, okay, which is fine. It displays fine, but there's no buttons to get back get me back home anything like that that's the goal we want people to have a nice experience on the web and to be able to use your website alright so this is gonna be that code that we're going to use you could take this code and put it into your WordPress blog into a Joomla blog uh, into any of the content management systems or you can just put it right into the your HTML page right into the code right like if you're using Dreamweaver here's my Dreamweaver okay and actually this is all of the code and this is the preview code and stuff but here's that code again so I can put it right into the HTML if you're just using a bare editor you can put it right in there too alright so let's talk about the parts and pieces to this because you might be new to this iframe is what loads another page into the current page okay so that's basically what we're doing here we're loading a website inside of a website this is the link that we told you we that we needed Remember images, stories, and then the date, and or the name of the folder. Okay, then index.html. All right, that's the link to it. SRC is source. 
frame border tells it to not show any kind of a frame or a, a border, a black border, which usually shows up around it. Width is 710. Remember we talked about the uh, the width of the of that viewing area, that content area without the sidebar? Well, I want it a little bit smaller, so that's why I made it 710 instead of 720. And then the height in this particular gallery, if I make, remember how I said that this one resizes itself automatically? Well, in the other ones, like this one, it's probably going to be a little bit smaller, probably only going to be maybe 500 or 600 pixels tall, and then you would have a bunch of wasted space underneath. So you might need to adjust that just a little bit to get the right size, all right? Uh, so width and height, just play with those so that it fits in there real nice and it, and it flows, all right? Then this last part. Most browsers, in fact, I think all browsers actually support this now, all the recent ones. But what I've found is some people turn it off for security reasons, and rightly so. If they're you know browsing a lot and you know they they're browsing some space places where they probably shouldn't be, or they get a lot of uh, issues, a lot of uh, uh, spam or malware or something like that, they start turning off, or they're very security conscious. Then you might want to turn that stuff off. But anyway. So that's why I add this little bit of code right here. Basically, this is just text that would display when this iframe doesn't come up. Your browser not support iframes, please switch to a new browser, or you can view the photo gallery here. Now, this is what this is a link. Okay, A means a link. All right, href is where they're going to go. Okay, the, the link to the page where they're going to go. Now, you could type in the full URL, which would be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash kazillo.com slash images slash yada, yada, yada. But in this case, we really don't need to. Uh, target blank is telling us that we need to go, that the browser needs to open up a whole new page. All right, instead of opening it in the current window, which is what you want, because then the person can go back to your site. All right, and then alt is uh, just telling someone with uh, a screen reader or something like that where this link is actually going to go and it's also good for search engine optimization all right photo gallery here is the text that's going to actually be highlighted all right and then the last one is closing the iframe see how we we open the iframe here and then we open the a and then we close the a and then we close the iframe so you can take this entire code Okay, highlight it, copy it right off of my website, paste it right into yours, modify this link, modify this link, modify your width and your height, and you should be good to go. That's it. All right. So then it will look like this. Bam, there's your Lightroom web gallery. Questions, concerns, did I not explain something well? I'd love to hear it. And you know what else? Paste some links. Once you've done this on your website, I'd love to see him, see how well it came out. All right, Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys.